Hey guys, it's time to finally put a bow over 2015 and talk about my favorite games of that year. A month after the year ended, but let's just move on. 2015 has been pretty good, much better than 2014 in my opinion. However, it's also been much harder to make a top 10 list because there were so many good games. And this list is gonna have some very glaring omissions that some of you are not gonna like, but it's either because I haven't played some games or I just didn't like them as much as other people. But I do hope you respect my opinion and if you want to tell me what your favorite games are, tell me in the comments and you can also tell me how wrong I am. But I also would like to extend an especial apology to Bungie for Destiny the Taken King. I do not include any remakes or expansion packs in my list for a reason, and as much as I like the Taken King and I respect that a lot of the improvements it had over the original release of Destiny, it's ineligible. With that out of the way, let's talk about my top 10 games of 2015. Here we go. Pew! Number 10. In my top 10 fighting games of 2012 video, I mentioned the fact that I was from Israel, and growing up there, I was really convinced that the number one gaming franchise is Pro Evolution Soccer, with FIFA being a very close second. And while I have nothing personal against those games, I never really got into them because I was never really much of a sports gamer. I mean, granted, there are people who love them, and I respect that, it's just not my cup of tea. However, at the middle of last year, PlayStation Plus gave me probably my favorite soccer game of all time, and you don't even play as Zine and Zine done headbatting stuff. You do it with an RC car instead. Let's talk about Rocket League. It'll be pretty easy to dismiss Rocket League by just being soccer with RC cars and calling it a day, but yeah, that's all it is. And sometimes the most simple of premises make for the most fun games. It's nothing short of exhilarating thanks to a tight physics engine and its chaotic multiplayer that can be played either off or online. Yes, what I mean by offline, I mean you can actually play with a friend right next to you. Take note, Halo 5. This is one of those games that you bust out at parties and simply have crazy fun, just trying your best to aim your shot to get that coveted goal. And I think that moment when you finally score might explain to my American viewers why the worst of the world is so infatuated with soccer. Rocket League is rockin'. Number 9 Originally, I wasn't excited about Yoshi's Woolly World, mostly because the last few Yoshi games were, uh, <laughs> disappointing at the very least. But when you take the cuddly exterior of Kirby's epic yarn and add Yoshi gameplay to it, you get the delight that I like to call Yoshi's Woolly World. The game has fantastic visuals as it is the first wool game to be in high definition, but more importantly, it is also very challenging especially when you try to find every single secret hidden within the game. It's a little bit sad that it took Nintendo 20 years to get the Yoshi formula down again, but I'm glad that they did. I can keep rambling on and on about how much I love Woolly World, and maybe all those arguments are not gonna reach to you, so I have one final one. It comes with the most adorable amiibo ever! Just look at it, it's so cute! <laughs> Yes, I fell into the Dead Island trap. The trailer looked nice, right, but the game was rather mediocre. But I gotta give credit to Techland, the developer, after making Dying Light, because it's pretty much the same thing as Dead Island, just a whole lot better. This is what happens when you give a Polish developer time to polish their game. <laughs> and yes, I know that zombie games are played out nowadays, but at least the Middle Eastern country of Haran is pretty fun to explore. Not to mention it has the best first-person parkour system in a game since Mirror's Edge. And on top of that, the combat feels very raw and visceral, and it's very fun to make the undead even more dead. Granted, the story is mediocre, but that concern is washed away the moment you learn that this game supports four-player co-op. Teclan put a lot of heart and soul into the game, and that's the reason why I highly recommend it, if only for this awesome easter egg. The game deserves a gold medal just for that. Number 
7. I admit I'm not the biggest connoisseur of horror games since I don't like jump scares in particular. But Until Dawn managed to do something that a lot of those hardcore horror games rarely seem to do. Make me feel legitimate dread for every single step that I take within the game. I can always compliment the acting, especially from Peter Stormare as the psychiatrist, and also how spectacular the facial animations are. But that's not even the best part about Until Dawn. It's the choice system that is really the crux of the entire game, that it does so much better than other games that try to achieve the same goal. Every single choice made in the game, whether it's minuscule or grandiose, is gonna affect the game in one way or another. And when you make a mistake, it's irreversible. You can't just simply upload an older save and everything is gonna be all hunky-dory. You have to live with the mistakes that you made, and the game will make you feel bad about it. And that's why it excels where other games fail. If you have a weekend to burn, or you have this special someone who's not specifically into video games, I highly recommend checking out Until Dawn and try it out for yourself. Number 6 I had a love-hate relationship with The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. I gave up on the previous game since it was kind of slow moving, and the first hour of Wild Hunt didn't really change my mind in the very beginning. But once the game opens up, both with its plot and especially its world, it becomes much more enthralling. For being the first game in the franchise that is in fact open world, there is a lot to uncover, and the combat is very addicting and fun, not just with the different weapons, spells, and items that you can use, but also in the ways that you can counter enemies. You can tell that CD Projekt Red put a lot of effort and heart into this game, and it really shows. Heck, they gave us a letter of appreciation for all the gamers who buy this game. How many developers you know would do that? That's why it's on the list. And also because it's a really good game. Number 5 Not only that Splatoon is Nintendo's first IP in about 15 years, it's also the first time they attempted a shooting game, and it worked phenomenally. While the single player is okay, the multiplayer is where I spent most of my time on my Wii U last year. From the huge selection of weapons and power-ups that you can use, to the varied stages. Splatoon is just perfect for those moments you just want to play a quick game for a short burst and it's extremely exhilarating and fun. But I also have to give Nintendo immense credit for supporting the game till this day, because when the game first came out and made it was rather drab in terms of content. But as time went by, Nintendo added more content to the game, giving it a much higher value. Considering the fact this is a third-person shooting game on the Wii U of all consoles, it's nothing short of spectacular that even I, who is not very good at shooting games to begin with, can actually win here and there, and that's why Splatoon is on my list. Number 4 Many publications that celebrated the best of the last year barely mentioned Mortal Kombat X. Is that because fighting games are now a niche? I don't know, but I love this game, so I'm gonna give it the love it truly deserves. At first, I have to give this game credit for standing on its own legs. It doesn't rely on nostalgia like the last game, and it creates a lot of new characters that for the first time since probably Mortal Kombat 3 are actually likable. The fighting engine is tight as ever, and I like the fact that each character has three styles that vary from one another. The fatalities, I think, were kind of went a bit over the top with the gruesome factor, but there are some pretty funny ones there too. But the real star are the brutalities. Those finishing moves have very specific requirements, and when you pull it off, it's incredibly satisfying. Heck, I managed to destroy a person from the hip up with my butt. With my butt. Number 3 Allow me to be honest with you guys, I haven't been a frequent passenger on the hype train. Even though I do appreciate the increase of word to mouth that increases the exposure of a game, sometimes it can lead to really large disappointments. 
However, what I want to talk about in particular is that the hype was actually correct, where both fans and critics liked a specific game, but I didn't like so much. And I really was dumbfounded as why is this getting so many high scores? And I thought this will happen to me again with Undertale. Everyone is talking about Undertale. Undertale is the best game ever. Even Game FAQ's best game of all time. Even over Ocarina of Time. I, I don't get it. What's the big deal? And the fandom drove me nuts. And that unfortunately pushed me out of the game for the longest time. But I thought to myself that this is not fair. This is not how games should be judged. They should be judged on their own merit, not by external sources like these. And I have to commend Toby Fox that pretty much almost single-handedly made this entire game. And if you take all this fandom crap out of the window, Undertale is a really, really good game. Undertale is one of those games that the less you talk about it, the more effective and memorable the experience is. But I will definitely say this. I really like the artistic style, I think the soundtrack is one of the best in years, how the script is unbelievably witty, and the idea of turning the defense mechanism of an RPG to a mini bullet hell shooter is a really clever idea. So while it's far away from the best game of all time, I do implore everyone to at least give Undertale the shot it deserves. You will not regret it. Number 2 From someone who never got into the Souls series, I love Bloodborne. Perhaps it's how improved the combat is from its spiritual predecessors that I grew to love it so much. Gone is the attack, block, attack strategy, and evading from side to side is much more integral. But evading is one thing. Learning an opponent's pattern and staggering at the right moment is one of the most rewarding gaming experiences I've ever had last year. Moments like these is what pushed me forward with Bloodborne. Yes, it's hard, it's very hard, but it's also fair. Even if you lose your entire currency, the game gives you at least a fair chance to reclaim back your fallen loot. Plus, the environments are beautifully haunting and sometimes grotesque, just like the many creatures filled within the walls of Yarnum. It's a game that rewards players that show perseverance by rewarding them with new tools to play with and new horizons to journey towards. Bloodborne engaged me so much last year that I played through the entire game twice. In fact, I plan to go and do it the third time. It's that good. Number one! I do have to say one thing before we move on to number one. Yes, Konami sucks for cancelling Silent Hills. And yes, Konami sucks for their treatment of Hideo Kojima. But you know what, despite all that, they did give me my favorite game of the year. And that is none other than... Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist! That's right, you can play as all your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! protagonists from Yu-Gi, Jade, and all those characters! And you get to have so many card battles, and confusion, and synchro summon- Okay, okay, it's Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, what did you really expect? But you know what, even though if this game is not considered finished, I adore this game, and of course, let's find out why. I have to give Kojima credit because he has balls. Taking a genre that's usually linear and turning it into an open-world format was a risky move, but thankfully it paid off. The maps in Metal Gear Solid 5 are huge and I've had a lot of fun exploring all different outposts and trying to recruit as many soldiers as I can. Yes, you can kill enemies, but I think recruitment is a much more viable option because you can upgrade your existing equipment, because we always need a better cardboard box in life. But I do have to address the story since we're talking about Metal Gear Solid, a series that is well known for its overarching lore, and yes, it does take a back seat. But first and foremost, Metal Gear Solid 5 is an interactive video game. Sure, I like games like Metal Gear Solid 3 because I love the story so much and I don't mind all of their gameplay quirks, but the point is that even if the story falters, you still don't notice when you get to the 30th hour of gameplay. So yeah, this story is not great, 
but other than that, not only am I gonna say that Metal Gear Solid 5 is the best stealth game of all time, it's one of the best action games of all time. And even if you're not huge into Metal Gear and you do not understand the lore completely, I highly recommend check it out, and it's a really good reason why it's my favorite game of 2015. Plus, you have a horse that can poop on command. You have a horse that can poop on command! Need I say more? Thank you guys for watching my rather late top 10, but at least I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll try to spurs as many videos I can after this, so look forward to that. In the meantime, why not subscribe to my channel if you want to support, and a friend of mine, Mr. Dan Syred, made a pretty awesome review of Super Star Wars for the Super Nintendo. Highly recommend it. Check his channel out. His work is good. Until then, guys, take care.